Hi friends, welcome to episode number one of our workflows series. In this series of videos, we will try to understand about the concept of workflows in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. Workflows basically represent the business processes. It defines how the documents, the various documents like your uh, purchase orders, your purchase requisitions, purchase agreements, how this flow through the system and also indicates who or what action need to be performed across these business processes. So we will try to understand about the foundational concepts related to workflows in terms of workflow configuration. We'll try to touch upon the, the workflow canvas editor as well, where you need to primarily configure the workflows in order to use it in the respective business documents like purchase orders or purchase requisitions. This is basically a beginner's tutorial. If you have already advanced skills in terms of configuring the workflows, probably I will not recommend you watching this series of videos. We are expecting to cover the entire topic in the next 8 to 10 videos. So, so make sure that you subscribe to the channel T365 Talks or follow my profile in LinkedIn. With that note, let's get started. So let's get started. Um, so we will discuss about the workflows in Dynamics 365 and um, as as we follow for every series of videos um, this series also we are planning to make around uh, 10 episodes um, so the agenda primarily looks like this so that you can start planning your learning accordingly um, this episode episode number one we will primarily walk through uh, giving the details about the workflow introduction and we will discuss about the concept of workflows and uh, like i said earlier if you are already an expert and you know how to configure the workflows in dynamics 365 probably this is not the right playlist for you to watch out probably in the workflow level 2 i will cover in detail about uh, how do we get into the deeper configurations of the workflows but this is more of a, a beginner tutorial uh, i hope the context is pretty clear and uh, followed by in the upcoming episodes 2, 3 and 4, we will primarily cover about the, the traditional PO, PR workflows because these are easy to understand for any users if you are configuring the workflows, uh, either even if you are working as a functional consultant and you are configuring the workflows for your customers, then uh, this is something which you should definitely start watching and then start doing this hands on in your system or sandbox environments as well. And uh, followed by we will also take you through the uh, workflow elements and configurations. I will also try to touch upon the conditional approvals and the editor canvas walkthrough because the, the complete configuration is primarily done in the workflow editor canvas where you need to uh, connect the nodes in order to uh, in order to assign the conditions and then make sure that um, the appropriate approval conditions are in place so that um, the workflow is able to follow the, the respective processes. And uh, we'll touch upon high tech, very high level, the, the bad jobs which control the workflows and uh, some of the important use cases for the workflows within Dynamics 365. And uh, probably at a very high level right now, it looks like a 8 to 10 episode uh, series of videos. So um, make sure that you subscribe to the channel D365 Talks. Um, so, so that's the agenda of the entire series. Uh, so for this first, for this first episode, uh, we will talk about the uh, workflow concept. We will introduce the what exactly the workflow it is so so if you look at organizations they typically require the the transactions with respect to purchase orders or purchase acquisitions or purchase agreements which we already discussed in detail about our in our procurement and sourcing playlist please do check out the same so if there are any of those transactions which need to be approved by a user other than the person who is actually uh, actually creating those transactions so organizations typically they require an approval workflow mechanism. So Dynamics 365 provides an out of the box functionality by which the user can submit the, the entire document for approval so that that can be reviewed by your organizational manager based on your organizational specific hierarchies. For example, to set up an approval process, you can create a workflow. So you create a workflow based on your organizational hierarchy. Like, uh, so let's say I am a purchasing clerk, I report to the purchasing manager and the purchasing manager is reporting to the chief procurement officer or the chief financial officer then each and every purchase orders which i generate i want that to be reviewed by the purchasing manager and uh, and if there are any budget limits i want that to be reviewed by the chief procurement officer as well so these are typically the use cases which we have in any of the business environments 
So in order to incorporate such a approval workflow, approval process in place, you have to configure the workflows. So that's where that's the basic definition of why we use workflows in Dynamics 365. So a workflow represents a business process. It defines how a document flows through the system. So in this within the system, within Dynamics 365, how the document flows, let's say the document can be in draft, in review. So we will get into the details in the next slide. But how the document basically you want the want want it to flow across various states before it gets confirmed and then uh, finalized. So this indicates who must complete a task or approve a document. So as a as a preparer or as a requester, I need to submit the document. I have a set of actions which I can take. And as a reviewer, who is my purchasing manager or the, the CPO who will be able to perform a set of tasks for whenever the, the document are submitted for the workflows. So we will quickly cover that as well. So basically, as a concept, the workflow is basically helps the organizations to kind of submit the transactions for approval and get it reviewed and then f follow the process of uh, completing the, um, the the overall approval processes. So, so that's a very high level definition um, of workflow in Dynamics 365. So I have a very short example where um, I have just give, took the screenshot from the existing MS Learn document for purchase requisitions. So this is just a simple example for you to easily understand. So purchase requisitions are typically raised by any for your direct or indirect material purchases. So so in those cases, if you just create a purchase requisition by default, the 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 document, the entire document, the purchase requisition documents takes takes the status as draft. So this is the approval status with which the document will be created first. And then once you added, added the, the purchase requisition line, we discussed in detail about the purchase requisitions. I will not discuss in detail about the probably I will share the code in this video. Uh, but uh, if the if the purchase requisition is in draft, then the purchase requisition can be submitted for approval. So you submit it for review. So basically then the document, the, the complete requisition document takes the in review status. So if it is an in review, then you have the possibility as a reviewer. So who is the reporting manager? They can go ahead, he or she can go ahead and uh, start approving it or rejecting it. So if they approve it, then they can be possibly converted into a purchase order and then the document can be closed or they can also cancel the purchase requisitions. On the other round, as if I am the user who is actually creating the purchase requisition and submitting it for review, I can also have I can also decide to recall the purchase request if I have made a wrong submission for the workflow I can also decide to recall the uh, the purchase requisition and uh, at the same time I can also decide to view the workflow history as well so it gives you the absolute control of the processes so that uh, at any point in time you the business processes are consistent in terms of getting each and every business document to be approved before it gets processed so, so these are some of the basic actions. So this PR workflow is typically a simple example for us to easily understand the, the workflow processes. Um, so like I said, uh, so typically what, what is that? Those are the actions which are taken. Let's say even in case of a purchasing clerk who is creating the purchase requisition, he or she can just go ahead and submit it for workflow. They can decide to recall. So in case if there are any mistakes are made, they can decide to recall the workflow. And at the same time, if they want to view the history, if the, let's say if there is a multi-level workflow which is actually required uh, for any of the purchase requisitions or purchase orders or your invoice workflows where you want the invoice to be approved by your purchasing manager, your accounts manager, and also by your CPU, there are multi-level workflows. If you want to know the the version, the view, the histories, then um, the, the clerk can very well go ahead and see where exactly the workflow is right now and then they can uh, uh, take actions on top of it. So, um, so that's that's uh, prim those are primarily the three basic actions taken by the 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 person who is actually submitting the documents for workflow, and if you look at the actions taken by the uh, the person who is reviewing the workflows, he or she can decide to approve the document, they can reject the document, or they can ask for the the submitter to kind of go and request some changes. So let's say I want to change the quantity, I want to change the uh, charges and if I want to make any 
changes which need to be requested then the the reviewer can go ahead and request the change or i can also go ahead and delegate to another user let's say if i am not a if i'm not the right authority or i i am unable to decide and approve or reject the work order then i can delegate the work item to another user in the organization or as a user i can also decide to recall and if i recall then it brings the status back to draft that's what we saw so let's say if the in this case if the requisition is recalled then from in review status it is moved back to draft and at the same time as a purchasing manager the approving authority i can also go ahead and review the history details against each and every workflow submission so these are typically the actions which are taken by the um, the 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 person who is actually submitting the document for workflow and the actions which are typically taken by the the reviewer who is actually reviewing the um, the documents upon submission um, so i think probably i'll stop there i will just uh, quickly show you in dynos 365 for this introduction section because i just don't want to get into so many topics right now uh, probably i'll switch back to dynos 365 um, so in dynos 365 let's say if you open the procurement sourcing module and uh, i'll just collapse all and uh, if you go to setup in the procurement sourcing workflow first you have to check whether the the purchase requisition or the purchase order in this case is enabled or not so in this case let's say um, we can view the purchase requisition line review workflow and we can see the purchase requisition review workflow and uh, if at any point in time if you click on new probably we will take this in detail in the next episode i'm just showing you how this primarily works so you can create a new workflow as well so by default you have the purchase order um, purchase order workflow as well where you can go ahead and start if you click on this it will redirect you to the workflow editor section so which i am not going to do right now and uh, i'll just simply close this and then um, and then if i go to um, procurement and sourcing parameters for the purchase orders if you want to track the changes at any point in time you have to activate the change management currently we are in the legal entity dat probably i'll just change it to usm of um, so once if I change to USM of, but for example, in this case for the legal entity USM of, activate change management is enabled. So in this case, the purchase orders, whichever it gets created, has to undergo the process of um, workflows. So uh, let's say if I go to procurement sourcing module and then if I click on purchase orders and all purchase orders, we will be able to view the, the workflow option on the top. In the action pane, you can see very well the workflow option, which is currently disabled because we have not selected, created the, the purchase order. But rather, if I go back to the procurement sourcing parameters, and then if I disable the change management and save this in the parameter, now if I go back to all purchase orders, then I will not be able to view the workflow option itself in the action pane. So for you to start using the workflows in the purchase orders, typically the entire uh, series of videos, we will typically try to understand the concept using the workflows in purchase orders and purchase requisitions because which is easy for us to connect and understand. And uh, so so that's why I'm just kind of uh, reiterating on this fact. So make sure that you have enabled the activate change management option and then you save the parameter, then go back to all purchase orders, then you will be able to view the, the workflow option in the top right so then like i said in this video we will just quickly see what are the actions which possibly i can take as a user um so that's what we were discussing let's say i'll just give create any purchase order and click on ok button then um then i'll add any item so let's say this let it be one quantity and then i'll go ahead and submit it for approval so on the top once i hit these drop down i can see there is a submit option for the workflow purchase order approval so this will process the purchase order for uh, workflows so this workflow is already configured in the system so i'll just go ahead and then directly submit uh, the purchase order workflow in case if you have any comment you can put that comment in the top uh, section and uh, you can see the right now the status is in in review so if it is in in review since i submitted this for workflow i can go ahead and recall this workflow in case if i want to add further more lines or change the quantity from one and two i can recall the purchase order then it will take that status back to draft um, or i can go ahead and view the workflow history as well so right now the workflow is submission is done 
and uh, you can view the date and time and you have the work items so this is where you can view the the list of users who have to approve the purchase orders in order to get this uh, approved so let me refresh this page uh, yeah i think the the workflow is batch job is now triggered and uh, you can see the approval conditions are mentioned over here because we will get into the details of those do not worry about those details as of now and you can see the work item right now it is assigned to user inga and uh, you can also see the work item which is actually assigned to the user but in this case we are not going to log in again because we have just logged in as an admin user and uh, right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to reassign this um, to myself um, so that i can go ahead and approve this as a, an admin user as well so so i'm just reassigning this to admin so that it comes back to me for approval um, so now this will change to julia from inga let me refresh this page so now you can see i because julia is the user with who, who is having the system admin role in the in the sandbox environment so let me go back um, and then refresh this page now if i click on the same workflow option instead of this recall and workflow is tree options i will be able to view the approve and reject buttons so now you can see there is an option to approve reject and if you click on more typically people tend to say that uh, i do not see the option to delegate or the recall you have to hit the the more option here where you have the additional options actions which we have just discussed in the presentation about an approve reject you can request a change or you can delegate to a different user if you click on delegate then you will have the option to provide the the users which are available in the system or um, and then you have to hit the delegate button or you can also view the workflow history um, so or you can also recall let's say if i recall then the status will become once again back to draft so if i hit the recall button can provide a uh, um, recalled then if i hit the recall again then the the status will now change back to interview let me refresh this page so you can see this document which we have just created this purchase order now is brought back to draft so so those are typically the actions which as a um, as a user we can take as a as a reviewer also the the person can decide to approve reject delegate or request a change so let me go back to the slide so those are typically the various actions which the user can take and uh, i hope we just set the context for the workflows we understood the definition of what a workflow in dynamics 365 and what are typically the actions which we can take as a user or as an reviewer for the the business documents so with that i think uh, make sure that you are subs subscribed to the channel d365 talks or follow my profile in linkedin see you soon in episode number 2 where we will discuss in detail about the workflows related to purchase orders and purchase requests and we will discuss about how do we create a new workflow from scratch thanks for watching this video